What's up everyone? Thank you for joining me for another video. This is going to be my first vlog style video, so I sped it up just to make it more interesting to follow along with me. Um, and we're going to be outlining how we made this uh, garland outdoors. It took approximately a couple of hours, but we did take a couple of breaks in between, putting up the hedge wall um, and moving it around. But you're going to see the entire process start to finish, so let's get started. <laughs> So today's colors are going to be pastel yellow, pastel gray, and white. And here I am tying up my first cluster, and again, every cluster has eight balloons. But today to elongate it, I'm actually going to be making each cluster out of 12 balloons instead of eight, which means I am just adding an extra quad of four to it. So usually we would have two quads and we would twist those in, but I'm actually twisting in a third one here. Um, that's right, not tying, twisting in just because it is an outdoor garland and it is, you know, it's more durable if you do twist them in. And as you can see, it's much more tighter and thicker. And I hang them up just so that they're not touching the floor. And whatever you can hang them up to on site, just hang them up to that. Here I am inflating and <laughs> excuse the black outfit. It actually was not matte white. It was a clean outfit. I was not dusty. It's just that when you work outdoors, the little tip, wear light colors because latex balloons do stain your clothing. Um, here's the camera guy, Arthur, telling me to smile more on camera because it is an early hot morning here in Ajax in Ontario. Um, so yeah, wear light colors when you're doing this. And while I'm tying all the balloons, I am only tying the ends on the insides. As you can see, a very heavy autopilot. I'm mixing between 16 inches and 11 inches. As you can see, that 11 inch over there, it's really 9 inches. It's not even 11. And I'm just twisting them in. I'm not even caring, really, uh, how the cluster looks. If it looks a little bit odd and not too perfect, that's great. I'm just making sure that my centers are nice and aligned because what's most important is that the center is aligned in here. That one that one was a little bit frustrating there, so it took a little bit. I had just, uh, there's no nail salon that's open here yet that we want to go to, so um, I hadn't done my nails and working without nails is actually diff more difficult for me than working with nails. So here I am trying to tie them in and again why this is uh, more difficult for me is because I choose now not to use fishing line or 260 um, to attach you can use it for the more difficult spots but when I'm creating the the main piece of my garland here I like to tie my clusters together so neck to neck so I reach in I usually don't use the necks of the 16 inches because I find that they're a little short um, so I like to use the necks of the 11 inches and again I don't pull both necks which means I don't pull the inside and the outside neck of the double stuff balloon when I tie my clusters together I'm only tying the inside necks together so here I am just completing my uh, yellow cluster this one I wanted to make a little bit bigger, so I included more of the 16 inches, and here I am adding a bit more of the 16 inches. The hobble walk is, is familiar to most, because I've seen all balloon artists, uh, whether professional or starting off doing it. It really helps keeping one cluster between your legs as you're making the second one. And again, I always use my knee, as you can see, to anchor the cluster as I'm twisting it, and it usually helps as you're starting off to use that technique. And here I am attaching, and we use a tarp, that, that blue tarp at the bottom. That's just easier to kneel on, easier to place your balloons on to make sure that they don't um, pop. But honestly, if they get on the grass, the biggest, they won't pop immediately, but the biggest trouble will be that it'll be very difficult to um, get, the, get all the dirt off of it. So it would actually be better to just put it on the tarp immediately. So here I am tying in a 260 to my gray cluster. And I'm just showing you guys just one way to do it because you really can do this with fishing line. This is just the 260 approach. So here I am. I just tied in a loop to one cluster. I anchored another cluster beside it. I'm pulling my 260 loop. And here I'm just finding a balloon which I can put the loop through. I'm choosing this little 11 inch and there it goes. And now they're attached together. So that's just like a little trick. If you can't get your clusters to tie together, that would be a little trick on how to do that. Um, nice and tight and here I'm playing around with it to make sure that it's dense and that I can't see any holes And once I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna attach it on to my main garland here And when I'm done, so we didn't finish the entire garland But here's Anjanae and there's Angelita in the back by the way you guys this is a white decor and Nene sweets 
um, here in local Toronto uh, vendor people. We are getting ready to put up that first part. So Anjanae clipped it off of our hanging rig. And here we're just looking at the placement, like where it would go. I like to make it, um, I teach to make it all in one piece, but when I'm having these creative days all on my own, I actually like to play around with it, see what works because I'm not really following um, a particular strategy here. I'm just trying to fill out the space in a, in a more, I don't know, in a more fun way. So it wasn't really planned. Me and Angelita just kind of played with it to see what looked good. So we started off with this top piece here and I attached a bit of fishing line to that yellow cluster and Angelita's just going up. What we're doing is we're just trying to see placement first. So we're trying to see whether we want it kind of in the middle of the hedge wall, or maybe we want it at the very end. So we decided to go with the very end and swing the fishing line over. And what's happening is that we are tying the fishing line to the other end of the fence. So we're actually not tying it to the hedge wall. And if there's no fence, you could tie it to the hedge wall, but just to even get the hedge wall a bit more support because the balloons are securing it more in place if it's attached to the fence that's where we decided to attach to so all i did i just tied it i double knotted it and that was it now i'm getting a bit more fishing line and i'm securing the other end so now i'm just pulling it through and here's just a close-up shot of what i did on the other side i bent it over the edge of the hedge wall and this is what you do with another backdrop too whether circle or square you'd never want it to go in front you'd want it to hang in front but you always secure to the back because that's how you keep that weight of the garland from falling forward here angelita goes instructing me whether it's the right height whether we like the position and once we have it i just double knot it and that's pretty much it so that's how that looks. There I am profusely sweating because it's a very hot day and I chose to wear a long sleeve, which was the best decision. And I am adding a little bit of detail to my very large white cluster. The white cluster I attached to that large gray cluster I attached with the 260 prior. And now I'm just placing it to see how the color pattern would go. In my head, we could have either done scattered, right? So every cluster would have been a mix of gray, white, and yellow. But I personally wanted to do color block, um, where part of it would be yellow and then transition to another color and another color. So this part here, it's actually hard for me to tie up since we tied that first part up with fishing line and I am terrified guys I am absolutely terrified of ladders um, so I have a very difficult time not uh, just tying balloons on a ladder or doing anything on a ladder so I decided to go for uh, a little bit of help with the 260 there so that would be a good you know reason to use a 260 if you can't just uh, just tie to itself and it holds on very well but as you can see it's a little bit more loose like if you look between the white and the yellow connection at the top corner you see how that white's a little bit more loose than the rest of the structure again that's because you use the 260 it will be a little bit more loose um, so that's why I do like tying the clusters directly to each other so here I'm going I'm tying after the white the gray comes the yellow but because it's the bottom I'm not just doing one cluster three I'm actually elongating it trying to use more of the 16 inches and I'm trying to get that initial form and honestly it's it's looking like it's there already the initial shape is there the it's it's on the side the color match is where we want it to be obviously there's no five inches no orbs no details no nothing but the general shape is where it's going to be we're happy with it so that's basically what we're trying to do the bare bones are done as i say um, well, almost done. All I'm trying to do is swing out that bottom to be a bit fuller and I have my 260 there because the bottom, you don't want it to be too tight because the camera angle doesn't catch it well if it's too tight. It's nice when it's a little bit loose because when it falls in front of the garland, it just, it looks a little bit different. You'll see what I mean when you attempt to do one of, one of the fuller garland ones on your own. You'll see that the looser it is, the better it actually looks on camera or in photos. And it makes it more easier to move around. If it's too tight, then it's kind of hard to play with the shape and move it around. So once I'm done with the bare bones, step two is three foot. So here goes that first three foot. And a little tip, I mean, this video you can clearly see is color, <laughs> color graded, sorry. Um, the pastels are much more vibrant. The green is uh, much more vibrant. But in real life, my little tip is if you are doing a pastel outdoors, we all know that pastel colors shine through much more outdoors than they do indoors. So use a crystal inside um, with a white outside instead of doing like a standard yellow inside. I did a crystal citrine. So that's, I know that in this video it still looks very yellow, but in real life, once you see 
see on the Instagram photos just with no filters, no color grading. It does look much more subdued, but still yellow. So my tip there is jewel inside of the white when you want a more subdued look and then standard color inside of the white when you want a very pop and like matte look. So the first three photos up there, I'm attaching them to 260s and tying them on. I'm not really thinking about placement right now because it's kind of hard to judge. This is a large garland, guys. It's not like nine feet, right? It's it's over, it's over, it's like 20 feet in length. So I'm gonna need to pop on a couple of these three foots before I can really start judging or shaping the garland. But again, my three foots can't be too close to each other. They can't be too far apart and they can't be in the exact same placement or else your garland starts to look like a stegosaurus or something so to even that out knowing that the next three foot on that yellow would go on top I'm gonna even it out by putting a three foot on the inside I'm gonna make it just a tad smaller but you can't even really see because it's really facing you I didn't choose to hide it like the other one and I'm gonna move up so I prop that yellow one up already and it's starting to look fuller right the garland before looked a little skinny it looked a little small but now the thicker you make the garland the shorter you make the garland so also be careful with that don't make it too thick or else it's, it turns into a hot mess of a rectangle so always be sure to keep that distance between your three foots and again it's okay to not have the perfect shape when you're working on it but make sure to have all your three foots up so that later you can play there's angelita with a mcdonald's mango smoothie holding up uh, there she is <laughs> trying not to be on camera she's holding up the ladder because i'm immensely scared and the turf is very uneven and uh I, I usually don't get on ladders, guys, honestly. I would rather finish it on the floor and put it up perfect than do this, but for the sake of making this video and showing you guys how probably most of you would do it on site, I am uh, willing to get on this ladder, which, which is realistically a step stool, but let's call it a ladder. <laughs> So here I am buffing out that bottom. I decided that the three foot, that yellow one, I wanted to drop it down to the floor because it looked better, it filled out the floor more. And just to create a color splash, because it started to get a little too light at the bottom. So I wanted to incorporate a little bit of the gray to the bottom part just to bring in the gray. I always like to have three splashes. I have three splashes of white, three splashes of yellow, and three splashes of gray. It's okay to have one splash of something, but realize if you put it at the top or at the bottom, then that's where the full point will go then people will realize something's missing here or something needs to be here so here if you look back before what it looked like and what I'm doing now I'm just attaching a little um a little duplet of three well a duplet plus one of three to fill out the space so you can always add on to the garland if you feel like it's missing it doesn't only need to be five inches right it could be a little cluster that you're adding on so once I'm done with that, the bare bones and the three foot, comes the orbs, the accent details. So with the orbs, I've got my 10 inch, I've got my 15 inch, and I have my 18 inch. And what I'm using here is gaff tape. So yes, sometimes on the orbs that I can't reach, for example, if I'm on a ladder, I usually don't use gaff tape because gaff tape, if your hands are wet or sweaty or there's a lot of humidity, just like all kinds of adhesive tapes, doesn't work as well. So I know that when I'm on a ladder, I can't use gaff tape. I need to use a 260. But for the bottom parts, I could definitely use gaff tape because this stuff holds very well. And again, it's G-A-F-F -F tape and uh, you could just get it from anywhere on Amazon really, but just check the prices, check if a local AV shop or a home hardware shop has a better price for you until you buy it on Amazon. So here I am inflating the little guys. Man, this stuff looks really easy on time lapse, but in the heat in the day, early in the morning, it's, it's very different. <laughs> but nevertheless, it was a beautiful finish here. And here is Angelita's daughter, Anjane, and she is doing the beautiful vinyl work at the back, and I do not have the patience for this, and I don't even know many balloon artists that do, because vinyl people are like very special people in the industry. Um, so here she goes, making that perfect sign. I mean, honestly, the sign didn't need to be there, because not a lot of people opt for like a personalized vinyl sign, let's be honest, but it looked beautiful. I always think that personalized signs look so beautiful. I just don't have the patience yet. I have a Cricut Pro, but I don't have the patience to do it. And Anjanae is just such a perfectionist. You know that little crinkle on the Y there? She took 
such immense care of it that when it turned out in photos, it was absolutely beautiful. So really people who get frustrated with vinyl, take a look at this. There's an air pocket there and she's working through it. And uh, that's how you do it. You got to pick one side up, work it down, work the air bubble down. You don't have to work it from two sides down. Pick one side and push the air pocket out, 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 just like that. And honestly, vinyl is stretchy. It stretches out, but it stretches in too if you push it in. So, and that's the final look right here. We're peeling, we're peeling the trans paper off. And how beautiful is that acrylic circle? It really does pop. And I wasn't a bit the biggest fan of acrylic circles, but after watching this and watching how uh, Anjane did the vinyl here, I became a huge fan because it really upgraded the entire look and it, and it just customized it, which, uh, which also was a nice touch. So yeah, that's the final look. Again, something I would never have the patience for. So here she's finishing up uh, the top part of the vinyl and I am finishing up the orb. So I'm just looking, looking where I want to add, where I want to um, put my big guys, where I want to put my small ones. I'm scared again, so, <laughs> so Angelita's there to hold uh, my ladder. As you can see, the orbs are still moving, and that's because, again, we didn't tie them right into the cluster. We tied them to a 260. So that means that they are going to have the ability to move around and uh, give you that flexibility. Because right now, I don't want it particularly in one place. I don't really know where I want it to be exactly. Um, I just kind of want to have the ability to keep it in one place securely with the 260 and have the ability to move it around. And you can always cut it out and tie it to another place. You always have two ends of a 260. So here I am. I didn't love the placement of that giant big orb, so I just took it off and now I'm thinking of a better place to put it at. And uh, really at this point, we're not going to be putting any florals just because the client didn't want any florals in this look. But what I would say is while you're doing the orb section of your garland, always keep in mind what else you're adding in. So if you're adding in confetti balloons or personalized balloons with like print or maybe florals or anything else on top, always keep in mind that you need extra area in your garland. A garland with no orbs looks less pizzazz. The garland with too many orbs looks a little overdone. So it's always good to keep a good balance of all of your accent pieces. Don't have too much of something. Or if you have a lot of accent pieces, make sure that you give room to breathe. So never cluster them, unless that's the specific look. Hey, if that's the look that you're going for, then that's the look. There's Angelina helping me up the stepladder, guys. I wish I could edit this out. But I choose to keep it in because anyone <laughs> that comes to a workshop of mine knows how terrified of heights I am. <laughs> so, um, and here the tables are starting to be set up. We're still in quarantine phase here. So um, all our vendors, unless we're from the same 10 people group, we still all will unfortunately wear masks, but hopefully that'll be over soon um, come the fall. Although it's... It's not going to be as cold in the fall, so I assume it won't be as much of a problem. Um, so here I am just detailing, detailing away with my five inches. Again, you can use gaff tape, you can use 260s, and I'm going to link some glue dots that you can use as well. Um, my new site is coming out soon, so it'll have a reference page for all the materials that I'm working on, and I'll link it in the description below when it does come out. That's going to be the first week of September. Um, September 2020 and if you're watching this video later uh, so here I go independently attaching my final orb and this is really the final looks of the garland personally the tables in my opinion were pushed a little too close uh, to to the look itself because even from a video or photo perspective we couldn't even really get a good shot but it turned out very full and what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to complete that side piece. I just have one cluster of white, one cluster of yellow, and I'm attaching that second cluster of gray to the first cluster of gray, just buffing out that bottom piece. And why I chose to do it is whenever you are doing a side piece like that, go on natural gradient, which means choose the darkest color to go forward and then the lightest and then white on top. And here, as you can see, I'm just using the little bit from the 260 of the orb to tie in my five inch detail. You can do that. You can use pieces of the 260s that are already in the garland to then attach the little details and pull it through your garland and attach over a hole or over a patch that you wanna fix. So here I am attaching the orbs. And again, I am using the 260 and then the end of the 260 I'm attaching to the little white piece at the bottom just to fill out that section more fuller. And then I can see a bit of a white, uh, 
what is that? A 260? No, that's not a 260. A white zip tie that I was trying to fill out there. I just wanted that white part to cover it. So Angelita setting up the plinths and the risers for the cake and cakes. Cake toppers? Cupcake toppers? You guys know that I know absolutely nothing about table settings. Um, I work in events and Angelita is the pro with uh, setting everything up and doing the props for this, but I know nothing <laughs> about it. And I just, uh, I am the balloon pro here. <laughs> But I find it amazing just even picking out the silver orbs to match those silver uh, cupcake stands and the cake stands. It's just so pretty to see all of it come in together and seeing the white font on the sign with the white in the balloons, you know, the green on the wall and the tree and the grass. Just overall, it, it made the entire look kind of really come together. And here is the process of, of it really coming together. And I would say that uh, it's quite the look. For the final touch, the only thing I would say is wind, of course, and birds and things falling on your balloons. There's nothing you can really do here. My little tips are keep things in bags, keep things hung, put a tarp down. Um, and when you are working, work away at one piece, put it up to make sure that your work uh, preserve so that it doesn't just get tossed by the wind to the fence and some of it pops so work at it piece by piece and I personally find it when I am doing an outside garland I like to start at the top um, and I find that when I'm working indoors I like to start at the bottom so uh, that's just a style preference but again it has to do with the wind and how the garland is going to look because sometimes you focus on the bottom and then you get to the top and you realize that, that um, it doesn't hold so that's why I like to start with the riskiest uh, part which is the top and that's pretty much it guys so I'm gonna link the double stuff colors uh, to this look on my website find in the description below and for anything else drop me down a comment and I will be sure to answer so thank you for watching the video and be sure to check out the next one um, subscribe to my channel and again leave a comment with any questions and I will be more than happy to answer them so that's it bye guys